We're here at the National Research Council building at 100 Sussex. It's a beautiful old place that some people used to call the Temple of Science, built back in the Great Depression. And there's a 3D lab here. I'm here with Bavana Dior and Chantal Paquette, and they're going to give me a free guided tour. So let's go have a look. Yeah, welcome to our 3D printing lab. Let's, let's see our printers. Those are the printers, obviously. Yeah, so these are our printers. Um, we have a number of them. Uh, in total, in the building, we probably have a, a good dozen. Mm -hmm. We only have two types. We have the filament-based um, extrusion type printers, and then we have another type which is more based on um, photo resins. Okay. You said the filament, that's sort of like a, you said they were earlier, they were a little bit like a fancy glue gun. Yes, it's exactly a fancy glue gun. Uh, we have four different filament colors, uh, so it allows for multi-material printing. Um, and we have simpler ones um, one that with one material. Okay. This one actually does a bit of milling and uh, cutting. Why would you want to put together different materials in one printer? There's a number of reasons to, to do multi-material printing. Um, I have this example here, yeah, this, where you can see it's a part, uh, three different colors. Mm -hmm. um, and what it highlights is that when you 3D print, um, you can unify parts. When you, if you print them all at once? Yeah. So, so if, this is printed all at once? Yes. Oh. So if you would make the same part using traditional manufacturing methods, you'd probably have to make three or four different parts and then take screws and, and, and assemble it together. So one of the benefits of 3D printing is um, you, you eliminate this um, assembly step. Same thing? Yep, same yeah, thing. Printed all at once. Yep. Okay, very cool. Mm -hmm. And then here's another example of uh, uh, two materials. Um, the white part here, it's got a bit of give. It's nylon. Um, the black part is carbon fiber. Um, in nylon, so it's, a, it's stiff, and you can grade it slowly, or you can have like a very sharp uh, line in the, the different materials. But this is, again, something difficult to do with traditional manufacturing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned something, we're, we're, we were calling it a soup, I know it has much fancier names, but what, what's that about? So there is another kind of printing which we are doing, is based on liquid resins. As you can see here in a vat, we have a liquid resin. And yeah, and when the build plate is going down, there is a uh, like a laser shining from the bottom with the image in it, and it's printing. Okay, yeah. And you can do a couple of different materials together in that yes. whole soup. Yes. So so far with this kind of method, only uh, polymers are printed. But what we, me and Chantal, we are doing is we are uh, trying to get the multi-material objects for different applications. As you can see here. So here is the example where we have the silver and polymer together, printed together, and the silver is coming to the surface and polymer is inside. So generally the metals are heavy, but if you take this and see how light it is. Light as a feather. Yeah. And so this is metal plus polymer. Plus, so yes. So yeah. why would a manufacturer want something that's metal on the outside and not on the inside? For mainly for electronic applications, like when you have a metal outside, you can again like put the different functionalities on it, right? So, yeah, sure, it transmits electricity. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, this is the one where uh, like the structures are rigid, but what we are trying to do is like use different polymers to make the structures flexible mm -hmm. for stretchable electronic applications. And you can see this. Yeah. So, I don't suppose there's a factory out there that's ordering this right now and knows exactly what it's going to be used for yet, but is that the idea? You, you get the technique now and the, the application will come along? If you have an end use in mind and there's a benefit to 3D printing, um, so uh, reduced um, assembly of parts, complex shapes, or you need to do a lot of reiterative designs um, when you're prototyping, 3D printing is ideal for manufacturers. Um, a, it's digital, so that allows you to design and print digitally. But also it's additive in the sense that um, you print where you need to only, and you don't need to subtract material, it's, um, or you don't need to cut or mill anything. So there's a lot less wastage of material. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. We are currently uh, working in a collaboration with Carlton University. Uh, so they, what they want is the antennas for 5G applications. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the medical field is adopting 3D printing um, because, as I mentioned, 3D printing is a digital technique, and so it allows you to customize shape. Everybody's body is different, so uh, dentistry, um, just medical devices, uh, prosthetics, um, it's ideal. You can just digitally um, make a one-off part. Um. Yeah, yesterday I saw a cool seminar on printing pills, like the yes. follicles, like yeah, so if you are taking, for example, three, four different kind of medications, so you have a printer and you ask, like you just want printer to mix them based on like you have a wireless sensors and your doctor is directing like you know today your BP is high or low or whatever and you need to change your medication so you don't need to go to pharmacy but you can just tell printer like what you want. Slightly can, smaller dose or a larger dose or a... Yeah, yeah. Oh. just print for you. Fascinating. So. Well this has been a wonderful tour. Thank you for showing me through this place. It's a, a lovely old building mm -hmm. and a lot of new things happening in here. I think we'll end it up there and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.